the finest warriors are never developed on their own. While some are simply molded by their enemies, the best usually seek the wisdom of a master. Who, for some reason, is a weird old pervert, like Roshi, turtle hermit and teacher to Dragon Ball's greatest hero. And Jiraiya, the toad sage and instructor to the most famous ninja of all. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Goku is, without a doubt, one of the greatest martial arts champions of all time. Well, yeah, he's good enough to rival gods, become a Super Saiyan, and even master Ultra Instinct. But he never would have achieved any of it without the guidance of Master Roshi. A martial artist who's so powerful, there's only one thing in the world that can stop him. Well, uh, two things, really, if you get what I mean. I know your game, old man, and I don't want to play! <laughs> anyway, when he was a hip youngin', Roshi studied under the legendary Master Potato. Mutaito and a kitty cat. These masters of ass whooping taught Roshi how to weaponize his own life energy, or ki. Similar to many real life Chinese martial arts, ki is a vital energy all living beings possess. The stronger and more focused you are, the greater your ki becomes. Roshi can use his ki to increase his power, pushing past his physical limits with a bunch of awesome techniques. He can fire explosive shots, go buff mode, stun foes with thunder shock surprise, and even seal dangerous enemies away with the evil containment wave. It wasn't long until Roshi refined these techniques and created his own martial arts style, Turtle School. Creepy old man turtle school, creepy old man turtle school, Roshi in a half shell, he's a turtle man. No, it's not about beating people up as slow as you can like I first thought. Turtle School, or Kame style, includes everything from tricky pressure point combat to a phony drunken style, which, if you ask me, is just a missed opportunity to get wasted. By delivering milk up a mountain, plowing a field with bare hands, working construction with simple tools, and being chased by both sharks and bees, all while wearing a 50-pound shell, Roshi's martial art focuses on breaking the wall of humanity in every way. Except for one. <laughs> Despite most of his students learning it at some point, flight is actually a technique developed by his rivals, the Crane School. Apparently, Roshi's just been a bit too stubborn to properly learn the skill, even after centuries of experience. How long has he been doing this? Well, it's a little vague, but thanks to either a pet phoenix he accidentally killed, or the mysterious paradise herb, he's just shy of 360 years old. Damn! I'm just impressed he can still get it up for the girls after all that time. Boomstick, that's... Well, I mean, yes, I guess medically speaking it is quite impressive. Where can I get me some of this paradise grass? I want to be chasing tail for centuries. Good luck with that. But with all of those years spent honing his talents, Roshi dedicated 50 of them to developing one revolutionary technique. Kame! Kame! Ha! Anyway... Ha! <laughs> gotcha! Uh, anyway... To be honest, devastating is an understatement. Well, yeah, he blew up a whole freaking mountain with it! This peak was inspired by the real-life flaming mountains in China, standing up to 2,600 feet tall. With this in mind, we can find that to pulverize such a mountain, Roshi's Kamehameha must equal nearly 4 gigatons of TNT. But that's small stuff compared to the time he obliterated the entire moon in about 5 seconds! That's gotta be worth, what, like 10? 20 mountains? Whiz, how many mountains make a moon? Well, more like 35 billion. To obliterate the moon in its entirety, the Kamehameha must have struck it with a force akin to 3 octillion tons of TNT. That's, uh, 27 zeros, by the way. Holy shit, Roshi's also super fast. He can fight an entire battle in a blink of an eye. Which might seem crazy, but Roshi is also able to snatch bullets out of the air that are fired at him from point-blank range. That gun looks like a British Sten, which can fire up to 600 rounds per minute at a muzzle velocity of nearly 1,200 feet per second. That means Roshi would have to react to the first bullet within 5 milliseconds. Additionally, each consecutive bullet would reach him just shy of 17 milliseconds apart. The maximum distance between any given shot looks to be about 3 feet. 
which means he would have to be moving at 180 feet per second in order to catch them all. Ugh, oh, if my hands can move that fast, I'd finally stop getting married. This speed is far from his limit, but Roshi's true talent is ensuring his students grow further and further than himself every day. Sadly, Roshi's frailty of age means his body can't always express just how powerful he really is. And using too much ki energy can cause all sorts of problems, like when his master Pistachio died using the evil containment wave. But while Roshi's pupils may surpass him, he remains one of the smartest fighters on Earth. He's tough enough to take down dozens of Frieza's soldiers and survived a beatdown from an alternate universe wannabe Frieza. He even took a barrage of death rays like a champ, the same move that killed Vegeta many, many years ago. And in the Dragon Ball Super manga, Roshi is shown to be so collected in battle his movements sort of emulate those of Ultra Instinct. Yeah, that's not technically canon, but it does go to show how far Roshi's training can take him. And it's safe to say that this old, perverted, but genius of a man will never stop training. <laughs> Among the ninja of the Hidden Leaf Village, few are quite as impressive as Naruto Uzumaki. Yeah, I know that's crazy, cause, you know. But not just anyone can fight aliens on the moon and become president of Hidden Valley Ranch. Naruto would become the Hidden Leaf's greatest champion and 7th Hokage, but this would never have been possible without his training under the dynamic Toad Sage and legendary Sanin, Jiraiya the Gallant. Gallant, huh? Hey Wiz, why do the most badass old dudes always turn out to be weird pervs? Uh, well, don't let his, uh, crude demeanor fool you. Oh, don't worry about me, Wiz. This ain't my first trip to Secret Leaf Ninja Town. Nothing surprises me anymore. What the f***? Um, anyway, Jiraiya originally learned the shinobi way from the third Hokage, who taught him how to use his chakra to do ninja magic. Similar to Ki, chakra is a form of life energy. In Hindu and Buddhist theologies, chakras are, in simplistic terms, gates within the human body which can be embraced to achieve enlightenment. However, in the world of Naruto, chakra is used to perform amazing ninja techniques called jutsus. Gesundheit. Thank you. Like most ninja, Jiraiya learned about four types of jutsus. Taijutsu, or hand-to-hand -hand combat, Ninjutsu, harnessing chakra as elemental weapons and tools, Genjutsu, which covers illusion and mental manipulation, and Senjutsu, a method of utilizing naturally occurring energy as an extension of oneself. Jiraiya mastered as many styles as he could, and even learned one of the greatest ninjutsu attacks out there, the Rasengan. With this, he gathers his chakra into a spinning orb of death modeled off the ultra-destructive Tailed Beast Bomb. And that thing can wipe out a whole village all at once! And on the weird side, he can sharpen his twisted sister mane into a shield like a porcupine and fire the hairs out like a needle gun. Possessing a keen and mischievous mind, Jiraiya spent plenty of time developing brand new techniques, such as the invisibility jutsu, which you'd think would be perfect for stealth or assassination missions, but he actually developed it specifically for... Uh... Research? Where else is a self-respecting writer supposed to get his, uh, inspiration from? Clearly, Jiraiya sometimes took his tinkering a bit too far. On one such occasion, he accidentally teleported himself to a mystical land full of giant talking toads. Is you sure Jutsu isn't just like another name for crack? After befriending the toads, Jiraiya trained under the sage Fukasaku. Where he learned a bunch of fire release techniques, like the toad oil bullet and flame bullet attacks. Now that's one impressive loogie! Jiraiya entered a pact with the toads, learning their ways and summoning them to the field of battle. As his own talents relied on trickery over brute force, such as hiding in shadows and manipulating his opponent's movements, the powerful toads were perfect allies. He can trap his foe inside a toad's throat, transform them into toads for interrogation, or even call a gigantic amphibian warrior to his side. Like the biggest grump you've ever seen! Gamabunta! You, I am the wise and powerful Lord Gamabunta, the chief toad! And you're an idiot! Now shut up! Ha <laughs> Bunta, you grudge the old toad. And through Fukasaku's teachings, Jiraiya perfected the art of Senjutsu. Through their combined efforts, he entered a new mighty form called Sage Mode. 
While it takes a long time to get into, Sage Mode Jiraiya can do all sorts of things he couldn't before. Like the unpredictable martial art Frog Kata, and a deadly genjutsu, the demonic illusion Toad Confrontation Chant. Which sounds weird, so why don't we just call it your f jutsu? Cause if you get cut, your soul is trapped by these big guys who desperately want a high five, leaving your physical body totally open to a swift kill. Sage Mode also enhances Jiraiya's other abilities, turning his normal Rasengan into the unstoppable Big Ball Rasengan, which, according to the official data books, is strong enough to carve away a mountain. Wiz, he's way more than just a mountain smasher. Jiraiya is quick enough to fight some of the fastest ninja around, like Kakashi and Itachi, some of which are fast enough to intercept lightning. The leader of a lightning bolt moves around 220,000 miles per hour, putting ninja like Jiraiya around speeds of Mach 280. Now I get why ninja are so awesome! Who needs guns when you're more than a hundred times faster than bullets? While Jiraiya isn't exactly the strongest or fastest ninja around, he's certainly one of the most clever. Over time, he rose to become a legendary ninja and hero of his people, hailed by the honorable title of Sani. And he's a gutsy one, like when he used his tricks to take out three of the six members of the emo rock band, Pain, before they tore his arm off, crushed his throat, and impaled him five times. But even while suffering excruciating agony, Jiraiya proved strong enough to power through and send a vital message to his most promising pupil, paving the way for the next generation of heroes before being swept off his feet one last time. You know, I guess he was a pretty gallant guy after all. As you can see, you fail! Jiraiya the Toad Sage falls victim to no woman's charm. Rare beauties fall for me! When you reach the stature I have, the ladies worship at your awesomeness! All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, if you're as hungry as I am for this fight, you may be interested in Blue Apron. By now, you've probably heard of Blue Apron, the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. But did you know about all the different kinds of delicious foods you can make? Like the honey chipotle glazed chicken with poblano and lime rice. There's plenty to choose from, since they offer 12 new recipes each week. All you have to do is choose the two, three, or four that sound best to you, and they deliver it right to your door. Plus, it's super simple to cook. It's got easy to follow instructions and perfectly proportioned ingredients. They're non-GMO, and the meat has no added hormones. My favorite part is feeling like a master chef, making creative and delicious meals with my own hands. You guys really need to try it out. It's pretty nice coming home knowing I'll have a delicious meal I can whip up with ease. So check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free at blueapron.com slash battle. That's blueapron.com slash battle to get your first three meals free. But right now, it's time for a death battle! This store is really close by. I don't know why. It's Who's this geezer? Hey, fuzz for brains. Where are the pictures? It's just words in here. Pictures? You fool! Words paint a thousand beautiful pictures all by themselves! Jeez, don't take it personally. Not like you wrote the damn thing. But I did! What the heck is this? You're stuck now, Baldy. <laughs> Shadow Clone Jutsu! 
ninjutsu! Jiraiya, you buffoon! What's this about? Hey there! Can you buy me some time? What? I'm not your servant. I'm the chief to- Get off my lord! Water style liquid bullet! He's a quick one. <laughs> Aim of containment way! Screw you, you pervert! Only a coward lets others do their fighting for them. You have no idea. I've been back on the beach the whole time. I can't believe you fell for that. Let's end this. What? <laughs> KO! Talk about a whole new way to win! Jiraiya was certainly one of the most powerful warriors of his own world, but there's no question that Roshi's sheer might outclassed him. One guy can break a mountain, the other can break a moon, <laughs> so that was pretty obvious. The speed comparison wasn't quite so clear-cut, though. While his unseen battle with Krillin was incredibly quick, Roshi's never personally shown speeds as fast as the lightning feats Jiraiya scaled to. But he did hold his own in the Tournament of Power against Planet and Galaxy Busters. Also, in Goku's training right after Korin's, he actually had to dodge lightning. Roshi's own training didn't stop after chasing the kitty around, and neither did his kitty chasing. So, scaled to Goku's progress, it makes sense that he'd be able to match Jiraiya's speed, and probably even surpass it. Still, it would be reasonable to believe Jiraiya could use his tactical talent to outsmart and outlast Roshi. Except, Roshi's a smart fighter too. Not only does he have way more experience thanks to his super age, but he's got an eye for traps in sticky situations, like when he figured out the illusion powers of the talisman fighter, Dercori. And remember, it took only 15 seconds for Roshi's Kamehameha to reach the moon. Given the moon's distance of over 200,000 miles from the surface of the Earth, this means the beam must have traveled over 57 million miles per hour, more than 260 times faster than lightning. There was no way Jiraiya could avoid Roshi's trademark move for very long. Sure, Jiraiya might be a crafty ninja, but all that doesn't boil down to much more than tricks against someone like Roshi. Roshi was simply faster, stronger, and had way more experience. And that's why Jiraiya croaked when Roshi beat him to the punch. The winner is Master Roshi. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you want to see some exclusive commentary, make sure to click the box right over there. And if you want the battle music from this episode, you can download it by clicking the link below.